Let's get it going. My partner in crime is Puns and Roses, and he's going to introduce the Daughters of Doom. All right. First up, number one, Daisy Chainsaw. Number 21 is Fright Down. 211, give it up for Grace Lightning. Taking her game up, number 22, Elevator. 324, Savage Patch Kid. 363 is Player Slayer. 360, Gear Grinder. Coming from ancient times to infest your nightmares, 38 is Cthulhu. 47, so feisty. Your captain, number 62, American Gangsta. 701, Kung Fu Skinny. Number 84 is Ferocious. Number 9, Mad Hatter. Last but not least, 917 is Apple Smash. Your head coach is Hetty, assisted by Bob and Elsie. Give it up for the Daughters of Doom. And back to you, Hamtrak. All right, now let's hear it for the Voodoo Dolls. Number 106, Malice in Wonderland. Number 112, Skull Crusher. Number 171, Sassafras. Number 205, Anaconda. The captain, number 408, Zoe Diggity. Number 46, Donna Dangerous. Number 620, Patty Hurts. Number 626, Tantrum. Number 65, Dragon Slayer. Number 730, Angry Badger. Number 76, Alexander Slamilton. Number 867, Preteen Titan. Number 911, Ghost Pepper. And number 127, Rainbow Flash. The Voodoo Dolls are coached by Rolls, Hex, and Kid. Uh, put your hands together for the Voodoo Dolls! All right, are you guys ready for roller derby now? On the count of three, everybody say, let's play roller derby. One, two, three, let's play roller derby! That's it, right there. All right, just about ready for that first jam to start. It got quiet in here again. It's almost like you're not excited about this game starting. Up on that jam line, who do we got, puns? Looks like Ghost Pepper up against Savage Patch Kid. So the jammers are the ones with the stars on their helmets and everyone else is a blocker. The jammers are the only one that can score points, and they do that by passing blockers of the other team. They get a point for each person they pass. For example, Ghost Pepper picked up four points on that pass. 
There are a bunch of rules also involved, and if you break one of them, the rest will give you a penalty where you sit in the penalty box for 30 seconds, and you'll hear a lot of whistles blowing. And it looks like we have a jammer penalty against the Ghost. Voodoo Dolls, so it's a power jam in favor of the Daughters of Doom. Meanwhile, the star was passed by the Daughters of Doom. So what happens is there is one blocker out there who has a helmet with a stripe on it. Oh, the and jammer it looks can pass the star to that uh, person called the Pivot, and the Pivot becomes the new jammer, which is why American Gangster is the jammer. And now American Gangster uh, accidentally went out of bounds and passed skaters while out of bounds. That is called a cut track penalty, and they will have to sit out for 30 seconds. So now it's a power jam for the Voodoo Dolls. And the score is staying even, 10 to 9 as it goes, but we still have 25 seconds left. Ghost Pepper getting a little bit of help from her blockers. Now both jammers back on the track, so it's going to get interesting here as points continue to get scored. Well, that'll do it for the first jam, and it's awfully close, 15 to 14. And the first jam goes the full two minutes. The good news about roller derby is that there's only a 30-second break between, and then it's more action puns. Absolutely. So that jam was two minutes, but many jams are not because the lead jammer has the option of calling off the jam. That's one of the reasons that you want to be lead jammer if you can. Great point. It looks like we have Alexander Slamilton jamming for the Voodoo Dolls. Up against Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter pushing that front wall up into turn one, looking for some room. And Alexander Slamilton having some trouble at first, but now getting through for lead jammer. So now provided they don't get a penalty, Alexander Slamilton has the power to call off this jam, and it looks like we have a successful star pass for the Daughters of Doom. Yes. And your jammer is now Fright Town. Fright Town finds a line on the outside. Yep, and Alexander uh, Slamilton was getting instruction from, from uh, Coach Rolls as they went by and decides to call off that jam before Fright Town can pick up any more points. And this game still stays very close, one point between them. So the other four skaters on the track who aren't the jammers, those are the blockers. Their job is to play offense and defense at the same time. This is one of the things that makes roller derby much different from many other sports. And that's true puns, because in most other sports, the two teams aren't playing offense and defense at the same time, and they're not scoring points at the exact same time, too. Grace Lightning burning around the track. Grace Lightning calling off that jam. Looks like a couple of points were picked up by the Voodoo Dolls, though. Dragon Slayer is quick. It's hard to stop her from scoring points. Oh, this is the fun part here. There's a lot of jockeying for position in between jams. And it looks like we have our first official timeout. An official timeout? I believe that's, that's, a, a, that's, that's a taco a, timeout. That's a taco timeout by Porque No. Porque, yeah. So usually there's 30 seconds between jams, but sometimes uh, the officials need some time to confer and make sure everything is correct. And uh, between those jams, you'll see the skaters jockeying around for position. Um, sometimes they like to set up their walls in the back. Sometimes they like to set them up in the front basically whatever strategy they've been working on. So sometimes before the whistle blows to start the jam, you'll see an awful lot of jockeying for position. 
And we're back to the action. All right. And it looks like Ghost Pepper jamming for the Voodoo Dolls. Meanwhile, So Feisty picks up a forearm penalty. That leaves Ghost Pepper as lead jammer and a power jam. So a chance for the Voodoo Dolls to open up the lead. But this game is still very, very close. Penalty picked up by Player Slayer. And Ghost Pepper is going to skate on through for five points and looking to pick up more. This makes it challenging for the Daughters of Doom to only have two skaters out there. Yeah, and by the rules, the very first person that the jammer passes, they pick up all of those ghost points in the penalty box. So Ghost Pepper picking up ghost points. Nobody steals these jokes, people. Ghost Pepper through for another five. Coming through, already a 15-0 jam. Now both jammers on the track, and Ghost Pepper calls it off. Voodoo Donut, the magic is in the hole. Proud sponsor, the Rose City Rollers and the Wheels of Justice. Now you're making me hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. It looks like Alexander Slamilton up next to jam for the Voodoo Dolls. And for the Daughters of Doom, it's Ferocious. Ferocious took and hit, hitting that front wall and driving right through. That was Ferocious, all right, right through that wall. And Alexander Slamilton looking for uh, some room to get through, but the Daughters of Doom defense is doing a number right now. Oh, and Ferocious gets through for another five-point pass. The Daughters of Doom are playing an excellent zone. Just bouncing Alexander Slamilton from person to person and never really giving them an opportunity to get out. Oh, so very close, Ferocious, trying to get through, but uh, all it takes is just a little bit of the skate to go out of bounds and to come back in in front of other skaters. That will get you a penalty. So it is very important for these skaters to stay in bounds. Power jam now for the Dolls. Alexander Slamilton looking for some room. Slamilton's looking to stretch this pack out. Dolls playing very passive defense or offense at the moment, letting their jammer really do the work. Yeah, they're going to let Slamilton try and uh, push that wall out and try and get him out of play, but it didn't quite work out. Now they have some work to do as Ferocious is going to try and push through and does. Now is the time for the Dolls to try and play a little bit of offense for their jammer as Ferocious comes around with five more points in hand. Cthulhu proving to be a terror out there, knocking Slamilton down. Ferocious is doing exceptionally well, and this is exactly what the Daughters of Doom needed right now to get back and close up the gap on the score, which is now only four points. Oh, an easy skate through that time for Ferocious it for five more, and we have a lead change. We do. Although Slamilton picks up points, and we'll have a lead change again. That was a big jam for the Daughters of Doom. Daughters of Doom fans, where are you? Getting in super close. Five more points at the end for the Voodoo Dolls, though, to take that lead back. Kelly Brown loves roller derby. Absolutely. And we love Kelly Brown. All right, it's Grace Lightning jamming for the Daughters of Doom. And it looks like Dragon Slayer jamming for the Voodoo Dolls and a penalty to Dragon Slayer. Lead jammer to Grace Lightning. Ages of these skaters is anywhere between seven and 12 years old. Dragon Slayer got called back onto the track and now a penalty for Grace Lightning, and so now it's a power jam, as there are not very many Daughters of Doom on that track, Buns. No, there are not. And you do not want to have a short pack up against Dragon Slayer. 
It's bad enough not having a jammer, but being down two blockers does not make things any easier. No, that just makes it much, much harder. And Dragon Slayer's gonna come through for five more. And now the Dolls expanding that lead. Dragon Slayer running into a full pack now for the Daughters of Doom, and that is definitely slowing things up. But still getting through is Dragon Slayer for five more. But now here comes Grace Lightning. Both defenses setting up. Oh, almost trying to guard that inside line. Grace Lightning finds room, and Dragon Slayer having trouble with the defense. Now One to beat, and she gets it beat. So now Dragon Slayer is through, as this is a points fest. Malice in Wonderland trying to organize the Voodoo Dolls defense. And after two minutes, that jam comes to an end. 28 to 13 in favor of the Voodoo Dolls. Lots of points to go around. Chiropractor, Dr. Kerry Shaw specializes in pain management and motor vehicle accidents. That's Asha Wellness. All right, jam number seven comes to a start with Savage Patch Kid taking the star for the Daughters of Doom and weaving through that pack of voodoo dolls to get Lee Jammer. Oh, and now Ghost Pepper is going to get through as well, so now we're going to have a race. We'll see how long this one lasts. Both packs are thinning out as penalties break them up a bit. Yep, the Savage Patch Kid getting through on this uh, second scoring pass now. Ghost it, Pepper looking for some room, but the Daughters of Doom defense is doing a pretty good job right now. Fright Town is having none of that. All right, but now Ghost Pepper gets through on the first scoring pass, and now Savage Patch Kid also getting through, getting instructions from Coach Hetty as she goes around. Ah, very smart play there. They were trying to get their blocker out of the penalty box before calling the jam off. Good coaching. Tonkin.com is the largest selection of new and used autos in the Pacific Northwest. It's only a click away at Tonkin.com. They are the sponsor of our jammer line puns. Who's next on that jammer line? On the jammer line in blue, ferocious. And in red. That is Donna Dangerous in red. Oh, and Ferocious Actually, getting through for lead jammer. That would be Zoe Diggity with the star for the Voodoo Dolls. <laughs> and Donna Dangerous just sneaking through on that outside. Sorry, that is Zoe Diggity. That is the captain, Zoe Diggity. My apologies. Bridgeport Brewing, check out your Bridgeport Beer Cup. Three lucky winners will drink Bridgeport on RCR tonight. See the bar for details. Amar Khan Gangsta takes the star for blue up against Alexander Slamilton in a return engagement. Quick footwork for American Gangster on the inside. And she's a lead jammer, but Alexander Slamilton is out of the pack also. Voodoo Dolls not getting their defense close together. And a quick call off will make that a 4 nothing jam. Yeah, only seven points between them. Two Town Cider, damn fine cider made here in the Pacific Northwest. Available at the concession stands. Damn fine cider. Damn fine. All right. We only have a uh, one blocker in the box for the Voodoo Dolls. Pack advantage for the Daughters of Doom. How will they use it against Ghost Pepper? 
Oh, wow, but it is number 324, Savage Patch Kid getting through for Lee Jammer. Meanwhile, Ghost Pepper pushing hard to get through there. Savage Patch Kid getting points and quick call off there as now they just keep chipping away at the lead of the Voodoo Dolls. Now only three points between them. Patty Hurst got a nice chip on uh, the jammer, but wasn't enough to slow her down. Black Cat Plumbing, your local neighborhood plumbing company and a proud sponsor of RCR and the Wheels of Justice since 2009. So now it's Donna Dangerous on the jam line. Make sure I haven't made the mistake there. And Mad Hatter jamming for the Daughters of Doom. Donna Dangerous getting recycled back and now lead jammer going to Mad Hatter. Donna Dangerous looking for something between turns one and two there. Daisy Chainsaw shutting her down a bit. Wow, a quick footwork and spin for Mad Hatter and she is through for four points and a call off. And a lead change. How about that? The Daughters of Doom now up by one with about four minutes left in the first half. OHSU Sports Medicine is proud to be the official medical care team of the Rose City Rollers. As always, a big thanks to our medical volunteers who are also here uh, volunteering their time to make sure everyone stays uh, safe. Dragon Slayer through, but a forearm penalty. And now Lee Jammer will be ferocious, giving the Daughters of Doom a chance to open up their lead. A quick juke and a push through. Malice in Wonderland holding the line along with Tantrum. Excellent job for Ferocious getting through. Continuing this power jam for the Daughters of Doom. Almost getting through. Oh, and a quick call off after all the points are collected, giving the Daughters of Doom a power start. That's good strategy. Freeze the opposing jammer in the box. Absolutely. And we have a timeout, a team timeout for the Voodoo Dolls right now. You've seen us mention the penalty box. The penalty box sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon. Bad girls, good beer. Bike Punk, locally printed, eco-friendly stickers, signs, and design. Visit bikepunk.com. Also, don't forget, during these timeouts, you can buy those raffle tickets. I know puns went through it earlier, but let's do it again. There's a KitchenAid mixer in there. Voucher for four Winterhawks tickets, which is amazing. Moonstruck chocolates and caramels. A Pips and Bounce two-hour reservation in a private room. So that's you can play some ping pong there. That's always a fun time. Coffee Rush, $25 gift certificate. Timbers and RCR swag and a host of other gift cards as well. And that will bring us back to the end of that timeout and back to action. Power start for the Daughters of Doom and Savage Patch Kid will be out there as the only jammer. Big Sav offense right off the gate from Fright Town and that springs the jammer free immediately. Sassafras was looking to close the door but wasn't able to get it shut. Dragon Slayer taking a hip whip off of Skull Crusher and getting through to complete the initial pass and now a penalty on Savage Patch Kids so this jam is gonna go the full two minutes and now the Voodoo Dolls have a chance to try and close that lead and possibly take over before the half ends. It is very possible. Dragon Slayer pushing hard on that pack. The Daughters of Doom have had some pretty amazing defense. There's no doubt there, but Dragon Slayer gets through. Penalty for preteen Titan. Now we have the jammer back on the track, Savage Patch Kids, so the Voodoo Dolls can't give Dragon Slayer any offense, but 
She doesn't need it, and she gets five more points. So feisty in Fright Town, we're able to slow her down, but not enough. Fright Town going to the box. And Dragon Slayer is through. More points. Savage Patch Kid racing up that inside line and taking more points. Both teams setting up defensively. Oh, but putting uh, body parts out of bounds with Savage Patch Kid, so has to start from the back, and that gives the Voodoo Dolls a chance to recycle as the game is currently tied until the points get added up there. That was a great hit by Sassafras to slow down Savage Patch Kid on that last pass. So this is gonna be really close here. Oh, four more points and stays in bounds just long enough to get that last batch of points to keep the lead at four for the Daughters of Doom. 98-94 with just a half a minute left in the first half. Our next set of jammers is Ferocious for the Daughters of Doom. And it looks like Ghost Pepper for the Voodoo Dolls. Oh, and Ferocious is through on that outside line, finding room. And just as we say that, Ghost Pepper does the same thing. Ferocious slowing down to avoid getting a penalty. All right, and that's going to bring us to halftime. 4 nothing jam in favor of the Daughters of Doom. Give them a big round of applause, everyone. That's a good, tight game. All right, we're getting ready for the second half. Daughters of Doom and the Voodoo Dolls score 102-96 in favor of the Daughters of Doom. And it's going to be Sassafras jamming for the Voodoo Dolls up against Fright Town. Both sets of blockers are dug in and ready to go. We're just waiting for the thumbs up, and now we have it. And we have an empty Pabst Blue Ribbon penalty box. Yeah, our jam timer socialize gets the jam started. And Fright Town pushing that pack and getting the lead jammer over in turn one. Meanwhile, Amara Khan Gangsta and Daisy Chainsaw slowing down the Voodoo Dolls jammer and Sassafras picks up a penalty. So Fright Town gets through for another scoring pass and the Daughters of Doom are now opening up the lead with still a lot of time left in this jam. Here's the strategy. What are they going to do? Are they going to go up and play offense or are they going to try and let them push out? They have to hold the pack. They got to stay within 10 feet. And Fright Town pushes through. Now we have both jammers back out on the track as Sassafras looking for room between turns three and four. And look at that little apex jump for Fright Town. Nicely done. Wow. Someone's been watching Lauren Much's game tape. No kidding. I mean, and honestly, puns, this is like some of my favorite derby to watch. The juniors are so much fun to watch. They absolutely are. It is a blast I mean, watching they, these young skaters. They have no limits. They just try and do everything. They're amazing. They're so inspirational. OHSU Sports Medicine is proud to be the official Medicare care team of the Rose City Rollers. Up next jamming is Ferocious for the Daughters of Doom. And it looks like it's all about Alexander Slamilton for the Voodoo Dolls. Now Slamilton's stuck in that pack in turn one, but Ferocious is coming around looking to grab some points. And Slamilton finds the broad way out of there. I see what you did there. Ferocious calls it off before Slamilton can grab any points, and it's a 4-0 jam in favor of the Daughters of Doom. 
And you see, this is where we're talking about the jockeying for position because it's clear that both teams wanted uh, a certain position on there, but now only one can win. And the Daughters of Doom will take that back wall, braced by their captain, American Gangster. But everyone wins in a dance-off. Absolutely. Especially the fans. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Right now for the Daughters of Doom, it's Mad Hatter looking for just a big push. But that defense, so good, but a quick move on the outside. And Mad Hatter is through. Pre-teen Titan finds a hole as well. Almost getting through. And Cthulhu not able to stop them. Pre-teen Titan with some fancy footwork of her own. Man, oh, man. These kids have amazing footwork. Yeah, yeah, they do. These skaters are just, they never cease to amaze me. Another 4 nothing jam for the Daughters of Doom, and that's starting to add up. Point differential now over 30. But still not out of reach, not by a long shot, especially with this much time left. Oh, no, there's a bunch of time left, and all it takes is one power jam to change that. It looks like Donna Dangerous jamming for the Voodoo Dolls. She's testing all those lines. And Apple it is. Smash and Kung Fu Skinny are holding back Donna Dangerous. Grace Lightning getting through for lead jammer between one and two for the Daughters of Doom. Oh, Donna Dangerous with some nice work on the inside line. And uh, she gets out on that initial pass. Yep, Grace Lightning calling it off before Donna can get any points. And the gap continues to widen in favor of the Daughters of Doom. Ghost Pepper's looking to change all that up next on that jam line. Bridgeport Brewing, check your Bridgeport beer cup. Three lucky winners will drink Bridgeport on RCR tonight. See the bar for details. Free beer's the best. All right, here we go. Oh, and look at Ferocious coming through with authority on that outside line. Anaconda was able to get a piece, but not quite enough. All right, here comes Ferocious looking to collect some points before Ghost Pepper can get around. And a quick call off for Ferocious. And she does just that, four nothing. Red Bull now served at the bar at RCR Bouts. Also, WSL Leadership Coaching, helping you be more awesome in your work, sport, and life. Up next, we have Dragon Slayer for the Voodoo Dolls. And back and forth, American Gangster trying to keep the defense on the move, trying to catch them by surprise. Oh, and just barely stays in. But I think it's going to be American Gangster is lead. Dragon Slayer first up, but not lead jammer. Oh, and an apex jump on turn two for American Gangster. Coach Hetty is telling her to call it off, and she does, and it's a 4-4 jam, and the Voodoo Dolls have crossed the century mark. Deb Counts Tabor, let Deb guide you home. Proud realtor sponsor of the Rose City Rollers. Welcome to PDX.com. All righty. Up next on the jam line, it looks like Ghost Pepper for the Voodoo Dolls and Mad Hatter for the Daughters of Doom. Mad Hatter is lead jammer again. I don't have the stats in front of me, but Mad Hatter's gotten an awful lot of lead jammers. I've noticed that as well. And Player Slayer sent to the box. Mad Hatter calling that jam off. But not before the Voodoo Dolls pick up two more points. 3-2 jam in favor of the Daughters of Doom. Support women and girls this holiday giving season and donate to the Rose City Rollers through the Give Guide. Go to giveguide.org today. 
Also, Sakatumi, unleash your inner superhero at Sakatumi.com. You know what else is amazing to me, puns about the junior games, is that these jammers, it seems like they're coming back every other jam, and they don't show any sign of fatigue whatsoever. I remember when I was that age and actually had energy. I don't remember. It, it, it was, it's a very fuzzy memory. It's been a long time. <laughs> Elevator jamming for the Daughters of Doom. I believe that's the first time Ella has jammed, and she's going to call it off with a 4-4 jam. Dragon Slayer was able to sneak in at the last second and grab four points. She just skywalked in there against Elevator. I see what you did there. They don't call you puns and roses for nothing. <laughs> oh, Franz Bakery. Man, they have been proudly baking in Portland since 1906. Oh, the cookies are amazing, and I have the waistline to show for it. All right, up next we have Ghost Pepper and Savage Patch Kid. Ghost Pepper, it seems, has been out here every other jam for the last few. She is just burning through that uh, pack. A couple of quick cuts, and Ghost Pepper is through again, and a quick call off. And no points for the Daughters of Doom. That's the first time they've been shut out in quite some time. So the Voodoo Dolls getting a 4 0 jam there. Great defense by Rainbow Flash to escort the uh, Daughters Jammer out of bounds. Selwood Pet Supply, quality nutrition and supplies for your pet. Daughters of Doom short one, but Cthulhu is going to try and get out there, and she's been telling her team where to line up to try and keep the Jammer at bay. That is Sassafras. And Lee Jammer going to the Dolls of Doom, ferocious. Angry Badger setting up that daughter's defense right now. Ferocious getting a quick points and call. But Voodoo Dolls come in with four also. Hey, you see the Jammers doing that back and forth stuff. Trying, that's Mad Hatter trying to keep the defense guessing. Going to go for that outside group and pushes through the first set of blockers and everyone gets pushed down from behind. Dragon Slayer with some fancy footwork for lead Jammer. Anaconda kept a lane open for Dragon Slayer that allowed her to get that lead. Mad Hatter is going to come around and try and force Dragon Slayer to call this off. But let's see what the defense of the Voodoo Dolls can do. Oh, Mad Hatter, the first to score points, though not lead. Dragon Slayer finally gets through for her first points of the jam and deciding to call it off. Buffaloon Gap, Saloon and Eatery, John's Landing's favorite eatery and saloon. I want to also shout out a group that we have come out tonight. Let's shout out the uh, Junior Girl Scout Troop, number 41809, all the way from Beverly Cleary School in Northeast Portland. Thanks for coming out. Ghost Pepper getting through for Lee Jammer. And now desperately needing points are the Voodoo Dolls with uh, just under nine minutes to go in this game. Ghost Pepper looking to get through. Ghost Pepper looking for a little help from the offense. Gets it. And calling it off right away for four nothing jam in favor of the Dolls. All right, never miss a bout this year. Head to RoseCityRollers.com to buy your 2018 season pass. Yeah, just about every one of these games sells out. So just knowing that you don't have to worry about missing a game because of not having a ticket is a nice thing. So go get your season pass. All right, it's preteen Titan jamming for the Dolls and Player Slayer for the Daughters of Doom, as this game is still pretty close. 
Oh, and it's a no pass, no penalty for Preteen Titans. So Preteen's gonna start scoring, but is not lead jammer. And now this one's going two minutes because pre, pre, uh, Player Slayer got a penalty. So this will go a full two minutes and this is exactly what the Voodoo Dolls need. Preteen right. Titan needs to get through this wall and get some points. Time is ticking. Oh, wow, ferocious. Doing Just some amazing uh, defense there and recycling Preteen Titan all the way back. See, that's why I love Portland. We're all into recycling. Plastic, paper, jammers, it's all good. Preteen uh, Titan looking to get through, but having so much trouble with Ferocious and playing with those lines. Oh, and Player, Player Slayer. Slayer gets knocked out. And a penalty again, so another power jam in favor of the Voodoo Dolls. And five big points start closing this lead. All right, Player Slayer is waved back on. And Player Slayer picks up four. And the officials calling a penalty. Player Slayer looking the inside line and a little jump and it's... It is a good apex jump for five Way to points. Stick the landing. And it's a uh, power jam start coming for the Daughters of Doom. And we have a timeout called by the Daughters of Doom. All right, you still have time to get your raffle tickets. We're gonna draw for that raffle at halftime of the second game. Lots of good stuff in there. There's a $25 Starbucks gift card, a $25 gift card to Powell's, a haircut with Joseph at Propaganda Salon, jewelry by Tabicha, Clinique products, a bunch of great swag from RCR and the Timbers and a voucher for four Winterhawk tickets, amongst other things. This game is still pretty tight at 165, 129 in favor of the Daughters of Doom, but still a lot can happen with 551 left. It really does not take much to score 36 points at Roller Derby. It really doesn't, but it's gonna be hard to do for the uh, Voodoo Dolls in this jam because not only are they short a jammer, they're also short two blockers. The Paps Blue Ribbon penalty box is, is pretty close to a six pack at this point. Boy, I tell you, I see, I see what you did there. Yep, and a quick easy lead for Ferocious. It's technically always a six pack, it's just not always full. Right. See, I don't come up with these lines quickly. They come, they're just later. All right. Well, now you are Hamtrak. It's. <laughs> The penalty box is starting to empty out now, but Ferocious sneaking through on the inside line for five more points. And the Daughters of Doom continue to expand their lead. Preteen Titan engaging the back of the pack, meeting some ferocious defense there. Oh, and Preteen Titan looking for some help, but doesn't get it and it's gonna get recycled all the way back. Oh, came on the track a little early, but was able to stay just out of bounds enough to avoid the call. And Ferocious is through for five more points. Fright Town in there doing some great defense as the pivot. Now guiding this tripod and getting her in there herself. And Preteen Titan is not liking this tripod of the Daughters of Doom. Ferocious now. <laughs> Showing to be a little bit tired, but that's 24 points. That's not easy to do. That is not. Only four minutes and 15 seconds about left in this game. And the Daughters of Doom having a huge jam right now. The Daughters defense just 
nearly impenetrable. They're doing very well, and, and they're also making the jammer do an awful lot of work because the jammer's going for the lines, and uh, they're recycling very, very well right now. It's just a cascade of hits, one after another, just slowing down the jammer just enough. How about that? A 34-point jam for Ferocious. And now we have a timeout for the Voodoo Dolls. Score 199-129. Coming up in January, we've got some more roller derby action. On the 13th of January, catch all four of your favorite home teams facing off in the 2018 home team season opener. Woo. I can't wait for that. That should be good stuff. And then the very next day, on the 14th, it is the Voodoo Dolls taking on the Killer Bees and the 2018 debut of your Rosebuds All-Stars. Yeah, they just did their tryouts this past week, so it's going to be exciting to see what the uh, travel team does this year. We're going to see the Rosebuds game up next just after this. All right, it looks like only one skater in the box right now, so more skaters on the track at one time than we've had in quite a bit. Cthulhu doing her best to start a dance off while still maintaining defensive contact. We always love it when everyone dances. It gets the mood better for everybody. That's a dancing tripod right there. <laughs> Way to go, skaters. You guys are awesome. And now we have a taco timeout. Poor K, no? Poor K, yes. Let's have some tunes here. Let's crank it up and have a dance timeout here. All right, dance time out over, back to business. Thank you, Tom Tom, for the tunes. 3.39 left in this game. And let's see if they block as well as they dance. Cthulhu putting Alexander Slamilton down and has to eventually let go. But that is enough work there for Savage Patch Kid to get lead jammer. And let's see what, oh, and a quick five points for Alexander Slamilton. Four points, rather. And the Voodoo Dolls are looking to close it up. All right, 202, 133 with just under three left. All right, here we go, closing down the last couple of jams in this game. And they're off. Ghost Pepper and Mad Hatter, the jammers for their respective teams. Ghost Pepper looking through but having trouble on that outside line. One hand out of bounds is not out of bounds. That is still good. And Ghost Pepper still looking to get through, but Mad Hatter back to getting lead jammer. Ghost Pepper. Spices it up and is out. Very spicy player. Mad Hatter looking through to get more points and does and calls it off very smartly. Two minutes remaining in the game. Let's mention some of our sponsors. Portland Mercury, Shebop, Portland Vital Signs, and Kay's Bar. All right, about ready to start jam number 17. Grace Lightning and Zoe Diggity, the jammers of record on this jam. Zoe Diggity looking to try and get through with that daughter's defense so very good. And Grace Lightning gets lead jammer. 
Zodigdi re recycling and taking another run. Oh, Zodigdi looking on that inside line. He's going to follow the jammer through, but no. Number 47, so feisty, gets in the way, and she's got to start all over as Grace Lightning is going to come around and look to grab a couple more points. Zodigdi looking for that outside line and cutting back in. So Diggity looking to pass the star and does. We saw a lot of star passes at the beginning, but um, we hadn't seen him in a while. It's good to see those coming back, and now we have a penalty on Zo Diggity. That so means that the star is not passed and is currently just lying next to the track. Yep, and only Zo Diggity can pick that up and either put it back on her helmet, or pass it. Grace Lightning coming through for five more big points. And now the game is pretty much in her hands as the period clock has expired. Legal procedure on 3-6-3. And a big recycle for the Voodoo Dolls, one of the first I'd seen. And that is the end of the game. Put your hands together for the Daughters of Doom and the Voodoo Dolls. So hang tight for just a second, and once the score goes final, we'll do our high fives, and then we will do the MVP awards right after that. So hang loose. And while you're waiting for the score to get finalized, oh, yeah, now it is. Even so, buy some raffle tickets. Your final is Daughters of Doom, 226. Voodoo Dolls, 133. All right, everybody, come on out onto the line and get some high fives from your skaters. Why don't you fool everybody and go that way? Go out that way. <laughs> Surprise, everybody, turn around. All right, everybody turn around. They're coming this way now. <laughs> hey, we got to keep the fans, you know, keep them paying attention too. All right, let's get the uh, captains out here with the VIP, or the MVP awards, rather. It looks like the uh, Voodoo Dolls are doing some last-minute conferencing. All right, come on out. Okay, we'll start with the Daughters of Doom, so... Who is the MVP blocker? See, which one do you have? Jam okay, blocker, okay. So who was the MVP blocker for the Voodoo Dolls? Malice 
Malice in Wonderland. Malice in Wonderland. Very good. And who was the MVP jammer? Donna Dangerous. Donna Dangerous. All right. Donna, Donna, stay here. Okay. Who is the, who's got blocker? Who is the MVP blocker for the Daughters of Doom? Daisy Chainsaw. Daisy Chainsaw. And who was the MVP jammer? Grace Lightning. Grace Lightning! <laughs>